The year is 1982. Two years after the disbandment of the original lineup of Quiet Riot, Kevin Dubrow, the frontman of said group, decided to contact ex-guitarist and now Aussie's lead guitarist. That's that's a hell of a gig. Yeah, so he contacted Brandy Rhodes to see if he could keep the name Quiet Riot for his own band. Rhodes and bass player Rudy Sarzo gave their blessing, and what do you know? They got to keep the name. Tragically, as we all know now, that Randy Rhodes was killed in a Cessna plane accident prank gone wrong, and uh, yeah, it was a tragic loss to the metal community. Sadly, the grief of losing a close friend and bandmate was too much for Rudy Sarzo, and so he ended up leaving Ozzy's band. Quiet Riot began recording a song called Thunderbird as a tribute to the late Shredder and asked if Rudy Sarzo wanted to participate in this recording. Well, the lineup of Kevin Dubrow, Rudy Sarzo, Carlos Cavasso, and Frankie Benali were enjoying themselves so much that they not only recorded Thunderbird, but over half the album together. Bassist Gary Van Dyke wasn't really working out anyway, so they got rid of him and Rudy Sarzo slid straight back in. Slid straight back in as a full time member. <laughs> Reflecting on Rhodes' presence on the original lineup of Quiet Riot, they were skeptical as to whether or not they should keep the name. But Randy Rhodes' mother encouraged it and made them keep it because, goddammit, Rhodes' legacy will live on. By September of 82, producer Spencer Proffer managed to get the band signed to CBS Records, and the album Metal Health was released on March 11th of 1983. The big single from the album, Come On Feel The Noise was released on October, not October, August 27th, 1983. You don't know how many takes of that I just did. It's a cover of the Slade song, which, you know, fit Dubrow's vocals very well. It spent two weeks at number five on the Billboard Hot 100 and is the first heavy metal song to crack the Hot 100. This essentially announced that the hair metal era had begun, especially seeing as this album topped the Billboard album chart and became the first ever number one heavy metal album. With the advent of this new thing called MTV, the video for the song received a lot of heavy rotation and, you know, did nothing but help the album's sales. The album's title track also being included in the soundtrack to the movie Footloose also helped them get a lot more listeners. Metal Health may have only spent one week on the charts, displaced by Lionel Richie's Can't Slow Down just the week following but the damage was done and metal was here to stay. The song Metal Health charted in early 84 and peaked at, what did it peak at? Peaked at number 31 on the chart. Just f***ing bit my, in, inside of my cheek. Ow. At least I taste blood, that's f***ing metal. VH1 would go on to call this the 41st greatest hard rock song of all time. Anyway, Metal Health would ultimately go six times platinum in the US. Quiet Riot opened for ZZ Top on their Eliminator tour, and Black Sabbath on their Born Again tour. While Quiet Riot kind of fizzled out pretty quickly compared to their counterparts of the 80s hair metal era, it's hard to deny that this album has a special place in the story. Anyway guys, you know the deal by now. Like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend, uh, and that's about it. Later dude. And the subsequent, uh, uh, and the subsequent debut, and the sub, uh, 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 right, for sake. Metal Health replaced the police's synchronicity. Metal Health replaced, uh, Met uh, uh, Metal Health replaced, Metal Health displaced police. The album spent one week on the chart. Uh, 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 in hell. Displaced by Lionel Richie's Can't Slow Down Just the Weekend. Fuck. The song Metal Health charted in. The song Metal Health peaked in. Fuck, man.